artwork. This artwork has been done by a painter, but it cannot be seen by a blind person. Somebody who is visually impaired, he cannot see it. So how do you get a visually impaired person to experience a painting? That has always been a challenge. And globally what they have done is creating touch or textured artworks or sculptures which can be felt by the person who is viewing. Here what we have done is we have created a narration. So in museums they have special slots when they take people around and somebody narrates to them. Or there is a website where you have a narration which you can read or you can hear. Here what we have done is we have but all that needs a human being physically present. Here if you have all artworks have their titles so instead of the, the title is also there, but we've created a chip here, near field communication and a QR code. So supposing now I open, I keep my cell phone close to this chip. And as I'm keeping it close to the chip, see, a website NFC tag comes and I click on it. When I click on it, see this artwork immediately comes up on this, on my smartphone. I don't need any special headphone or anything, it's on my smartphone. It comes there. And I open this and I have a, here enable this, the screen reader enabled. So in visually impaired person, they have the screen reader enabled already. So once I have that enable thing and I click on this, it will select this and in, in a 30 seconds, it will start reading out details on this painting. The narration, how has the narration been created? Created by two people, one behind who is not seeing the painting and one in front. And one behind is narrating to the one in front. What is, see this narration has started now. So you can listen to it. Full narration, how it is composed, what are the colors, what is the perspective, what is the composition, the art curation. So between two people and then finally curated by a curator of the exhibition. And then the artist's perspective also. So all that is there on this. So every piece of artwork in every museum can have this QR code and chip NFC enabled for inclusive access of artwork to the hearing impaired. Hearing impaired person is also there. They can read the text. Or the visually challenged person, they can hear it like this. It's a global first, to the best of our understanding. So with this program, basically, you, uh, you are trying to introduce this type of technology in art. In art, experience for inclusiveness of the hearing impaired, the speech impaired, and the visually challenged person for this kind. So hearing impaired can read the details, and the vis you can't have all these details on adjacent to the painting. You have this on your smartphone, you can carry it with you and understand it. You can hear about it if you are visually impaired. So it's inclusiveness across the board increases. I am Anuradha Goel, Namaskar. I am chair of the PhD Family Welfare Foundation. Every year we have an annual flagship program, Honar Unlimited, in which we recognize the talents of our beneficiaries in our skill development units. At any given time, we have 6,000 beneficiaries studying in our different skill development units. Dr. Matthew Verghese, head of orthopedics in Stevens Hospital, said he was having an art display of specially abled children. So he said, could I do the exhibition in PhD house? I thought about it and decided to club it with Hunar. Why Hunar? Because Hunar is also talent, and this is also talent of the specially abled. And it worked out very well, because an uh, uh, audience of over 350 uh, visitors came to see the exhibition and they all wanted to buy the paintings. It was a total sellout. Uh, we haven't re really sold them yet, but people are very keen on buying them. And this has given us an idea that in future also, with our annual Honor flagship program, we will attach a cause of this kind so that people are aware of what our specially able can also do. What Thank was, you very much. Uh, what was the theme of today's uh, event? Every year we have the event which has been um, suggested the mandate of our Honorable Prime Minister. Last year it was 
75 years of independence. This year it was India's entry to the moon. So all the, uh, the skit and the dancers were all in sync with that. Talking about the cultural program, program so uh, just one question about that. The people, uh, the uh, students that were performing, were they part of uh, any uh, uh, organization that is related to the PhD Chamber of Commerce? They are all our beneficiaries. We run 25 skill development units, pan North India, as far as Assam, Orissa, Gujarat, and these are students from our skill development units. We teach 10 skills in a holistic manner, and so far 44,000 uh, beneficiaries have been skilled and have become Atman Nirbhar and are earning their own living. So at, uh, right now we have 6,000 uh, beneficiaries studying with us. In uh, 25 different centers? Skill development units. So these are all those, some of them are studying in school and learning a skill from us. Some of them are just learning a skill. So as I said, we have 10 skills and all our, the students who pass out from our center are self-sufficient and are earning their own living.